Yeah. Oh, oh. Magic. Oh. Oh. Um, that just cost us one and a quarter percent just for the, the transfer. And okay, we're starting now. So um, two numbers. Okay. There we right. So just a brief talk on our big projects for the some people here who've been participating in. The <coughs> Noah Carl was unfortunately not here this year. He came up with this title, The Left Liberal Skew of the Western Media. So his idea is that basically all the media have this left liberal skew. And but no one apparently has ever bothered to collect all this data, so no one really knows whether this was true or not. Maybe the media was actually a right wing in say UK and is left wing in some like the US or something like this. No one knew, so we looked. So I think James will talk more about this, but we seem to have persistent problems with the media. The US UCL to investigate. Eugenics Conference secretly held on campus, very secretly, it's in fact publicly on the internet with talks on YouTube <laughs> and so on. Uh, not so much eugenics, of course, uh, it's like one talk in, what was it, uh, two talks in uh, two years or three years or something. Toby uh, Young apparently set this off by being prominent in the media that threw attention our way and we had some student journalists come after us. So. We don't see newspapers like this, they say, they don't write newspaper articles that say UCL to investigate secret Marxist conference <laughs> on, on the, because it's not so much secret, secret when they held Marxist conference, that's more like normal. So there's a <coughs> difference there. So are the media really left-wing biased? <coughs> so if you kind of read about this, you see that Essentially, there is a bunch of uh, conservative pundits in the media, and they say, oh, of course, this is true. And uh, you can find some left-wing ones, and they say, of course, this is not true. And you can even find, uh, found uh, Noam Chomsky wrote, wrote an entire book saying the, the media is right-wing biased. So who is right? right? Someone must be wrong here. <laughs> um, so there's very actually little published research on this, uh, and why is that? Hmm, maybe the other people left-wing too. Um, so, <clears throat> when you look at the published research on this, it's all, almost only about the US media. And um, there's basically one guy, this Groß Klos, who uh, is not German, but South German, who's been doing this research, and he seems to be the only person motivated to do this research. And that's because he's a conservative, and the left-wing people don't care about the left-wing bias because it suits themselves. And, um, but if you kind of get an impression, you talk to people from different countries, everybody seems to agree, more or less, like commoners, that there is a left-wing bias in the media. Um, so it seems that there's a good like, reason to expect this to be true. So there is a reason to actually investigate it across countries. So <clears throat> there's different ways to investigate media bias. Uh, we start with the not-so-good methods. Funding analysis, you can kind of look where do media actually get their money? And curiously, this funding analysis method is used both by Marxists and by Nazis. So if you read the studies by Marxists, they say the bourgeois own the media, and these are people with the means of production, blah, blah, therefore the media are right-wing biased because it's controlled by the powers that be. And if you read the Nazis, they say the media is owned by the Jews, which are the bourgeois, and hence the media are uh, left-wing bias or commie biased. So this method gives two different results and it's useless method. Um, and in real practice when you talk to journalists, funders are not generally involved with the actual day-to-day -day operation of uh, the media. They just kind of own it and kind of wait for the uh, money to take in. Um, the second thing you can do, you can do content analysis. So the way it's traditionally done is that you find a bunch of um, articles and uh, newspaper and someone kind of reads all of it through and says this one is biased, the other one not so biased, this has problems because humans doing the content analysis also biased so you have to do lots of humans and try to get a representative group and so on and it's very slow because it has to get a human to do all these articles. Um, you can do machine learning nowadays where you kind of train the machine to recognize um, bias in the media 
and some very clever methods with this uh, that has been used. For instance, they took they took um, Congress talks in the U.S. from the uh, the Congress House of Parliament in the UK, that's UK, um, and they looked at the words that uh, the say conservatives used in the um, uh, the Congress talks and the uh, uh, the Democrats used in the uh, Congress talks. And they told the computer to find like subtle linguistic patterns in this. And after you train the model to predict who's talking, you put this on the media newspapers and then tell you the relative skew of the media. Very clever. But it doesn't work very well across languages. Um, and so it's only been done for the US and only for some media. So there's a third method. We, use a, we look at the people who actually do media, media personnel analysis. Um, we looked at a bunch of data. Initially, we were trying to get more than just journalists like editors and this sort of thing, but it turns out almost all the sources, like 95%, only have journalists, so we're kind of limited by the data again, so that's what we looked at. So, why be interested in what journalists kind of think about politics? So we follow the, the distortion theory from uh, Gold's Close, um, and it's kind of the same reason to study uh, this topic as when you study academics, it's because beliefs affect behavior. Everybody is biased, but uh, when the bias is consistent in some area, it pushes consistently towards one direction. If it was balanced, no one would care because the bias would cancel out. And so, for journalists speaking, the bias affects, or if you have some political belief, it affects what kind of stories are you writing about, Usually, if you go to the, like, <clears throat> some day on the newspaper, there will be lots of different things you could write about this week. Only some stories actually ever made it to print out of the hundred potential stories. Which five stories are you writing about this week? It's not a random selection. It's journalists, they write stuff they think is important, and that is some degree related to their own political beliefs. Who do you choose to cite in your, uh, in, as sources in your stories? You can do, um, let's say you have a story uh, about some political news. Who, do, who are you interviewing to get the opinions in your story? You see, the way it works is basically there is always like 100 different experts you can choose to ask. Which experts are you seeking out? It depends on what kind of answer are you looking for. You can always find an expert that gives you the answer that you want. You just talk to some more experts, right? And that's, uh, you can get these funny stories sometimes where you have a representative experts who turn out to be these gender scholars or some like extreme fringe position stuff. Um, choice of framing, you can always, which kind of words are you using to describe people? That kind of depends on your own political persist, uh, position. Like you can follow the uh, horseshoe theory on this sort of thing. If you're a far right person, everything looks far left to you because you're really far right. If you're a far left person, everything looks far right, you see. So, uh, and actually, we, I did confirm this years ago in the Danish data. I looked at the relative mentioning of far left and far right uh, extremists in the media. And you can see the media is almost always talking about the far right extremists. Uh, and it even follows, if you look at different media, the more left-wing media talk even more about the, the far-right people than the normal media, but all of them talk about the far-right, uh, and which is the opposite pattern is when you read the police reports, they basically say, uh, the left people are doing the, uh, lots of the uh, street terror and stuff. Um, and I don't really think that anyone can pretend that political views do not affect behavior, everybody is biased, the social psychologists, in this case, are our friends. have been proving this point for, for decades, and I do believe they're correct about this one. And the bias seems to be kind of mutual. No one is free from this. It's the kind of a human condition to be biased to some degree. Um, hence, if you were to really share, show that, um, that media is full, basically, of one political group, this would be conclusive evidence of bias of this group because no one can escape the, the bias of their own beliefs. Um, but still it would not tell you like the extent of the bias. Maybe bias is real but it only has a small effect and so on. So you kind of still need <coughs> uh, content analysis following up this. Um, but it would, it's a nice uh, beginning. Um, in this case biased leanings just means not representative of the general population. 
There are actually more sophisticated ways to approach this, uh, as he does in his uh, book, Tim, uh, but we will not cover them here. So, what we're actually looking for is uh, there's two kinds of data you can get for journalists, more or less. Um, you can get what kind of like self-rated political position do they have, like self-rated left-right scale. Um, we don't like this data because everybody has their own uh, social homophily, everybody's in their own like media bubble, and so if you think you're left-wing, that's kind of a relative comparison to your own small media bubble, and uh, if you think you're sort of far left, you're probably even more far left in reality because you're comparing yourself against other leftists, it's the same thing for people on the right. They, uh, if you think you're moderately right, you're probably actually more extreme right, and this sort of thing. This introduces uh, <clears throat> bias in the data, so we don't like it. Um, and um, academics, of course, left wing too, and they're not very interested in media bias because academics are left wing, and why study something that helps you, that would just expose your own benefits? Um, however, journalist voting data. <coughs> It's not biased by this thing insofar as journalists are not lying what they're voting for, which I don't think they are. But the problem is that finding journalist voting data is difficult. Because they don't like just advertise it and put like a big, you know, um, study out in Journal of uh, Journalist Studies or something. Usually you have to go to the local language, you find some kind of me local media report and they would have some like obscure poll of 100 journalists or 50 journalists, this sort of thing, and they voted for this thing in this year. Um, so it's kind of uh, obscure sources. And uh, of course, since there are so many different languages in the Western uh, countries, you have to go through every local language to find these voting data, which took a lot of time. Um, sometimes the things are only in books. The books are not on the internet. You have to obtain like a scan somewhere. Um, sometimes it's you can only, it's only mentioned in like a newspaper article, maybe the newspaper paid a pollster to, maybe they polled their own journalists, this sort of thing. Sometimes they only report past part of the data. This is real, that we just have to make do with this kind of data, there's nothing else. Um, so what we did is that I assembled um, a bunch of research assistants and we basically looked around in all these languages and we wrote to all the academics all the professors of media studies, like the journalist associations for every country, like, hello, uh, Spanish journalist association, do you know of any journalist voting stuff? And they say, like, no, but talk to this professor and lots of emails more, and sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you just waste time. Um, okay, so now, suppose you have, you know the data uh, about the journalist, how do the journalist vote? They vote 10% for this party. You can get the uh, comparison data from uh, the general election, and you see, you get, you know that the relative voting behavior. But it doesn't tell you much because now you just have a bunch of parties where the general population voted one thing, the journalists voted some other thing. Um, we need some kind of information about these parties they voted for, and so we basically just took it from Wikipedia. And every more or less party, you, there has a, a page on English Wikipedia, and on Wikipedia. It, the data is kind of structured in this semi-structured format that you see over here. And um, that enables you to scrape it automatically and parse the data, um, and that can, you can easily update this analysis as you know, someone updates Wikipedia or something. Um, and there's essentially two things you can get. Every party has like a list of these ideologies that someone thinks, uh, whoever it is who edited Wikipedia in this case, they think it's, it's descriptive of this party. And so this one, we looked at the Sweden Democrats and people think their uh, ideology is Swedish nationalism, uh, economic nationalism, social, and so on. Right? So these are the kind of party tags. Um, and there's also a political position to the down right here, right wing to far right uh, in this case. This, it also goes all the way to far left and you can convert this to a numerical scale, minus three to three. Um, so this is basically what we use for the party level data. Um, let's see. So, how far did we get? We got data from, by looking for about, uh, how long do we do this? Um, nine months or so, maybe. Um, 17 countries, we managed to find some poll or survey, sometimes we found multiple. What journalists vote, we have 16 Western countries and then Russia, 
um, which is usually excluded from these analysis because we're interested in Western media. <coughs> these are the countries we've covered. These are the large countries we're missing. It's mostly basically Southern Europe and Eastern Europe. We emailed a lot of professors from these countries, but no one seems to be able to find as a poll of journalists from these countries. Uh, there are some Greece people we emailed, they say, oh, uh, we will uh, do a survey for you, but only for co-authorship. Ah, hmm, sneaky. Um, and so, no, we declined that. Um, but in total, we do have uh, 113 parties um, uh, right now. And um, Wikipedia doesn't have complete coverage for some of these. Sometimes they're missing the tag data. No one apparently added it. Sometimes it's a political position. Data is missing. Sometimes the political data is not missing, but the party has like a weird political position. It's like a uh, unplaceable party or some other like non-mainstream. It if it doesn't have a left-right position, you can't use the structured data in this way. It was just excluded. Um, so if you do this, you have about 100 parties left. Um, all the data is public here. You can go look at it, find our errors. Um, so. Quantifying party preferences is tricky. I couldn't find any standard methods for this sort of thing. So what we decided on is that we're just going to try a few different things to see kind of how it affects results, a method um, variance check, so to speak. The simplest approach uh, is just kind of taking how many journalists voted for this party minus the general population. This is like a, a percent point absolute advantage for journalists. So if um, journalists voted, you know, um, I will get an example in here. The other one is relative ratio. We just take the journalist percent, divide by the general one. It's kind of how many times more did the journalist vote for this. Um, this the relative ratio has <coughs> issues. If, as anyone has ever read medicine, you know that this method is sort of biased for things that go close to the uh, 200%. And you can take the odds ratio instead, which has all kinds of nice statistical properties, but it doesn't have a nice intuitive property. Um, so it's, but it's very close related to the relative ratio. So in um, one example is that we, we have some party where journalists vote 35% uh, and normal people vote 10%. So the journalists have a 25% more they vote for this party. The relative ratio is 3.5 and, and the odds ratio is uh, 4.86. So how does it look like? You know, it basically looks like this. If you quantify it in these different metrics, I'm showing two different ones here. Um, this one is the, uh, the delta, I'm just looking at the, the voting percent advantage, and this one is the relative ratio. And you see the pattern is more or less the same. This one is 50, uh, minus 58, and this one is minus 52. So about minus 55 is the relative preference of journalists for, um, for left-wing parties. Uh, and this, this is data that comes from the, the Wikipedia political position. Right? And if you're wondering about sometimes one party is in the half, uh, like here, it's because Wikipedia described the party as center-left to center. I uh, took the average of the two positions described, and that's how you get a half uh, value. And there's like a 94 because some of them were missing, as mentioned. <coughs> Uh, wait a minute, just so I can catch up. Uh, you, you see a bias of 55. Uh, can you please explain again to me what, what that means? This is just a correlation here. Okay. Um, so as this is the you know the relative journalists, they like parties more as they go more left wing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can also see the kind of hetero skeleticity. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the variance is larger over here. Um, so just for uh, illustration. So. If you look at the tag analysis, the things mentioned on the, uh, the political ideology in Wikipedia, what we have to do is that Wikipedia is not exactly structured. Some of these uh, things they write in the um, ideology is not exactly consistent across different pages. So you have to simplify it a little bit. Um, but if you do this, I extracted these categories you see down here from the Wikipedia ones, and then you can calculate the relative advantage of journalists and how much they prefer or disprefer uh, these different kind of categories of parties uh, by the tags. And uh, Jonathan has been so nice to, um, to plot this data in a nicer way than, than my plot was. And uh, it essentially looks like this, that uh, if you go to the things that journalists really like, they like green parties, 
journalist wrote something like um, three percent times as much for green parties as, as normal people do based on general elections. They like feminist parties here, like so social liberalism, pro Europeanism, socialism, centrism, and a bunch of these things. Communism, of course, uh, <coughs> these things that you kind of would expect. But this is based on Wikipedia. These tags are uh, from the parties, yes. Right. And the data is from the journalists in these countries. Okay. Yes. Um, and of course, the stuff that journalists don't like, uh, if you look the other side, is that uh, these values are kind of in the negative. The, social pop uh, the general population votes this many times more for these parties as the journalists. <coughs> journalists really, really, really do not like national conservatism. It's six times or so more in the normal population as among journalists, which in many of these polls actually mean you can't find a single journalist who will vote for this party, even though there's like 20% support among the population, and of course these parties will have a tough time in the media. Uh, it's very obvious. Right-wing populism, which is overlaps strongly with this, populism, nationalism, you see the general pattern. Journalists do not like stuff parties that basically like traditional Europe. They like these reformist kind of uh, socialist metropolis parties. Um, so multivariate um, analysis of this data is difficult. You have a lot of different tags, you have the position, but you only have 100 parties. As someone who studies statistics will know, 20 predictors, 100 sample size, this will not give you any stable results. So in fact, we didn't even try properly. We just ignored it, we can't do anything. Um, however, if you do, you do some basic multivariate analysis of the most common tags, results were broadly consistent with what you saw on the other ones. And left-wingness itself um, is generally not useful in the multivariate because it's more or less a proxy for feminism and these green parties and so on. Journalists don't like leftism per se, they like these specific uh, green parties and feminist parties and this sort of thing. Um, so the conclusions is that the, uh, there is a large left-wing skew of journalist voting behavior, about minus 0.55 as judged by the correlation in the voting, and it doesn't really matter how you operationalize this party preference. Um, the tag analysis of these parties, the political ideology of the parties, it shows exactly the stereotypical pattern you'd expect. And uh, it's been very stable since we started collecting data. We only had data for like five countries. It was very obvious. And then we collected data for 10 more countries and you get the same pattern. So I don't expect this will change at all. It's basically, expectations were all confirmed and the conservatives were right all the way about the media and stuff. And these are the references. Thank you very much.